Hello, my name is Lynn. Welcome back to my channel or whatever. I'm outside in the backyard, but it's literally raining and it's like I literally been asleep all day. I'm still pregnant as pregnant can get and it feels like I just need to be outside like I feel like yeah period so um, if you see me looking down it's because I'm holding a script if you're new to my channel welcome if you're not new to my channel you already know how I go I usually write scripts for most of my videos um, as you can see by the title today's video is did you die though yeah ha! I mean literally no let's start there literally I did not die spiritually yes and so let's get into it <laughs> um, but before we get into it you already know you might not let me tell you um, I'm an author got Holy Trinity of books uh, linked in my description box as well as all my books are written by me edited by me and buying by my me bound devil one i'll be binding books so that being said period if you want to support a small artist link is in the description my instagram is in my description box um and my x account as well i don't really be on twitter i ain't never really been one for twitter um but when it comes to instagram my instagram's safe i don't edit my pictures i put filters on them but i don't facetune and shit like that or like um edit my body and shit like i already got body dysmorphia as it is so i can't can't really fuck with them apps like that so anyway let's get into it did you die though i got a story to tell i got a story on my heart i gotta tell my story Alrighty. so on may 25th 2021 i was in a near fatal car wreck um and at this point in my life i was literally so depressed and i was so hopeless like hopeless really don't even begin to encompass like the amount of grief i was feeling this was less than a year after my brother was killed um whew. and i didn't know how to navigate the weight of grief i didn't have a compass and i didn't have help and yeah niggas didn't even have time to prepare for it it's just like one day you here and then and then you gone so with that being said my grief made me feel entitled to self-destruct because of how harsh the world had felt like it was being to me because of how cold reality became instantly i just felt like yeah i was entitled to self-destruct and i took self-destructing very fucking serious nigga it ain't the first time i almost died but it was the last time i almost died for some stupid shit okay so i want to get into the story of that night may 25th 2021 did you die though so the intention of the night was to go camping um, before I even left the house, I was already drunk. I drank a, a wine cooler before I had even left the house. And so my friends pull up. We get in the car. We go to the park. We're supposed to be at, to camp in. Or so we thought. Um, we started taking shots like it was 90 proof liquor. Then somebody come on the intercom at the park. And they like, y'all gotta go. The park's closed. You're not supposed to be here all this bullshit nigga we was tweaked out like first of all not only was we drunk off our asses but where are y'all talking from like <laughs> that shit was crazy i didn't even know that park had an intercom and i didn't know you couldn't camp at that park because it's definitely listed on google as you can um with that being said we had to go back to my friend's apartment um we was already for me i was already fucked up no i wasn't driving that night but i was already fucked up um and all of us was drunk at this point so we burned a lot of rubber to get back to my friend's apartment and it was the grace of god we even got back there because literally 
I remember smelling rubber with the windows down. Like I said, I was drunk as fuck, so I don't really, I can't really recollect the night um, specifically. I have videos of the night that help me like recall, but, and I'm not putting those videos in this video because there's other people in those videos who I don't have consent to use their image. And I don't want people's introduction to people to be some shit that people have outgrown. This was years ago, it was 2024, this was 2021. So moving forward, we get to the friend's house um, and we just keep drinking. We was partying, we was dancing, we was talking, we was laughing. Um, and then <laughs> somebody had the idea to go to the strip club. And mind you, we were supposed to camp that night. So I had like, I had on a big sweatshirt like these boxer briefs under the sweatshirt and flip-flops by this time it was like 3 a.m and so i was like first i was like i'm not going to the strip club looking like this and then i was like fuck it if we go into the strip club i'm going to the strip club looking like this <laughs> fuck it so we was already drunk as fuck we had no business driving to the strip club this was our actual second mistake of the night this was the second mistake of the night um, clearly we kept making the same mistakes in one night. We get in the car to go to the strip club, burn rubber all the way there. Niggas was hanging out the window, rapping songs. I was in the backseat twerking, getting thrown around by the swerving. We thought, oh my God, was that a bug? We thought we was having, you feel me, the time of our life. Niggas did not know that was going to be the last time. So, moving forward in the night, we get to the strip club. Strip club's closed. The strippers is outside. The bouncer is outside. He's like, nah, bro, we closing. We like, what the fuck? We just came all the way out here. We met a stripper named Peaches. She got in the car. So, literally, <laughs> this shit's crazy. After Peaches get in the car, we go across the street in the car to a gas station. Um, yeah, we get snacks out of the gas station. We ended up meeting somebody at the gas station. I guess he was leaving the strip club too. He had, um, he was a motherfucking young nigga move that dough. He was a dope boy. Dope boy, dope boy. And literally, he was gonna sell us some thing that night. I bitch can't even say too much. He's gonna he's supposed to sell us something tonight. So he was like, Yeah, just follow me over here to my daddy house. He was a grown man, but he had just got out of the jail, so he lived with his daddy stuff. So. Um he's like, Follow me over here to my parents' house, um, and I'm gonna serve you. So we go to his house, the whole ride there, treacherous. Like I'm telling you, at this point we so drunk while we are in the car that it didn't even feel, it didn't even feel fun no more. It started to feel dangerous. Like, if you've ever been out and you felt the shift from like danger, like from fun, like on the edge to danger, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And so, literally, we get to this nigga house. We pulled up, we was real loud. I think the music was loud. Hold on. We pull up, we super loud, the music was loud. We was we got out the car, we was loud as fuck. When I'm drunk, I talk super loud, I already know. And I be hollering like and laughing all out. Um and so he come back out, he don't got the fucking weed to sell us. He's like, Yeah, gotta go, y'all done woke my parents up. They ain't with that shit, they don't want y'all in front of our house. So we cussed him out. Be like, What the fuck, nigga? Fuck y'all. Like we cussed him. We was cussing this man out. He's like, yeah, whatever, y'all gotta go still. And then Peaches cussed us out because the way we drove to get there was so reckless and so dangerous. She was like, y'all like fucking with people, it's lives. This shit ain't no joke. Y'all can fuck around and die from this. I killed somebody and hurt yourself and somebody else. Like she was letting us know like, this is, I feel like that was the foreshadow. <laughs> 
looking back that was a foreshadow we cussed her ass out she ended up just walking off she's like fuck it, i'm gonna get my own ride i'm not getting in the car with y'all y'all she kept calling us young idiots she peaches was way older than us i think she had like 10 years on us in 2021 in may i was 21 so literally um moving forward after peaches leave the nigga cussed us out we ain't getting no weed we like bro what the fuck this night's been whack as fuck we ain't been able to camp like we wanted to. Nigga, we couldn't even go to the strip club. We just got cussed out by two strangers. And we got to try to get home drunk as fuck. Um, so the nigga that was supposed to serve us at his parents' house, he's like, well, y'all can come over to my girl's house. And I can serve y'all there. She, got, she keeps on my shit at her crib, too. We get there. I don't even know what the fuck happened there because I was so drunk. I'm like, I don't even know. I just remember pulling up outside her house. I think she was on ass with him because my friend rode with him in the passenger seat. So I think she was mad about that. And it was super late at night. And she's like, and I think she had a kid. She like, why the fuck you bring these drunk ass kids over here? It's time of night. Like everybody was getting cussed out off the back of us, and we just <laughs> cussing everybody out. Bad. So literally, it was an entire debacle. Um, so I guess on the way home from that, that's when the shit hit the fan. I blacked out in the back seat of the car. Before I blacked out, someone was telling me to put my seatbelt on. So I, the last thing I remember doing is literally putting my seatbelt on, then I black out. And when I woke up again, I heard my friend screaming my other friend's name. And then you just hear skrrr, and then boom, 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 After that, it's not like drum roll, please. Dun, 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 dun. The drum roll is the car flipping, boom, 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 boom. It flipped at least three or four times. What stopped us from continuing to flip, I crashed into somebody's house, was a fire hydrant. The car hit the fire hydrant while it was uh, facing right up. And so after it stopped, I got out the car, had to find my other shoe, get my laptop out the trunk. And that's why I'm in the story because <laughs> that's where the story got it in for the sake of the platform that I'm on. But I'm saying that to say, um, I was not driving that night but I did feel just as responsible as my friends who was driving drunk because I didn't protest it. I didn't even suggest that this is something that we shouldn't do. Even though I felt like that once the shift started happening where it started feeling dangerous. By then, niggas was already out the crib and far from it. Um, after the wreck, we ended up going to my apartment because we wrecked closer to where I live than where my friend lived. And... Um, my boyfriend at the time came to pick me up and I went to his house literally I was so sore like my shoulders were like stuck up here and I could only move like this like I was so sore one of my friends was like limp at the arm one of them had a concussion the other one was literally bleeding so we got fucked around I think that for me, if I wasn't as drunk as I was, I would have been paralyzed because, like, a part of why I was able to, like, move my body after is because I didn't tense it while we was in the wreck, and that's because I blacked out before we started tumbling, fumbling. Um, so, basically, after we get to my apartment, my mama comes over there, my friend's big sister comes over there, um, and we start, like, making our plans on what we need to do next. Um, yeah, so with that being said, the moral of the story of this video is, no, I didn't die physically, but I knew it was parts of me that I needed to either, to lay the rest because that night made me realize I wasn't ready to die. I didn't want to die. Um, and me punishing myself, like, is not, is not going to help me heal like me being harsh to myself um out of reaction to how i feel like the world is to my lineage like it's not liberating and it don't feel good and i remember thinking i said out loud actually to my friend once 
like almost as soon as the wreck was over and i was like fuck my mama would have had to bury another child and that's devastating to even have that thought to even think like for nothing i would have put my mama through one of the worst things she could ever go through for the second time just being frivolous you feel me just acting like it's a, a chip on my shoulder and that oh my feelings are valid if your feelings are causing you to self-destruct i destroy the people around you or self-sabotage your feelings is not valid <laughs> they're not valid you gotta find a re another way another way to engage with those feelings before validity is something that you are owed i hope that makes sense to somebody because nigga i had to learn that shit the hard way um with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and close this video out i do want to mention that it's not cool to drink and drive and it's not cool to see your friends drinking and driving and not say nothing if you don't say anything you just as uncool as the motherfucker that's doing it and y'all equally as responsible to me in my eyes that's how i feel so at that point in my life my level of consciousness was cowardly and i was really hanging out with people who i didn't have stuff in common with no more we was familiar with each other but we trauma bonded we wasn't like intentional intentionally bonding um it was all through trauma and so yeah basically i know now um to be a good friend you don't put people in life or death situations um and yeah shadow work is about self accountability and that's the context of literally every other video in this series um this is related to my video that's up that's gas and it's about my relationship to substance abuse um because this is a domino effect from that kind of relationship that i had within myself not blaming the people that i was with and so um let's see um at this point in my life i have new friends <laughs> that are healthy <laughs> we are intentionally friends we are not um trauma bonding um we teach each other things we see each other and this is my reality today because i was patient and intentional when it came to aligning when i couldn't learn my lesson in a way that was gratifying i had to learn my lessons in a way that was mortifying nigga. and that's the transition of my shadow work series to who i am now and i have a baby on the way and <laughs> i mentioned earlier in the video i'm 10 12 months pregnant i'm 13 months pregnant <laughs> so with that being said what it gives is that i want my daughter to know who i was what i went through before i was her mommy so when she's 20 you feel me facing these same dilemmas and these same choices she can have the tools to exercise some autonomy some discernment um with no shame like and she can understand that she's not alone and this is not an isolated event um so yeah i hope this video makes sense to somebody check out my shadow work series subscribe to my channel like this video comment down below i got a comment on the video the other day and i was super excited i'm like this is so dope um i enjoy hearing other people's interpretation of what they heard me say <laughs> and so you don't have to just comment and agree with me you can comment and present how you feel about the topic and it'll be respected unless you're being disrespectful then i'm gonna disrespect you <laughs> but if you're not being disrespectful i ain't gonna disrespect you i put that on my weaver scale but yeah anyway follow me on instagram 
and check out my Etsy shop with my books in it. All that will be in the description box below. Thank you so much.